uh, what usually I've seen there's an immediate kind of uh, um, uh, immediate kind of uh, bond happening when there is this moon or moon sun interaction happening. It's a very immediate bond. I've seen that very strongly. So usually, like uh, when one when the man's sun is on top of woman's moon, that is like perfect. Wow. So it's a very good complement that can happen very very easily. And usually, that is looked for marriages. It used to be that at some point that was very important for marriages. Uh, nowadays, but if the, if you find that Western astrology in synastry act soulmates, <laughs> that kind of you know sun moon kind of link, they just say soulmates. Sun Venus kind of link also they say soulmates. But our sun moon is a very good uh, link. So now in some cases the woman's sun may be on top of man's. Moon. So those are the marriages in which you is kind of dominating, but the man might also play out. You know, man might be supporting that woman one way or the other. Or the woman will be very particular about where that woman wants to have the control. So in my home, I decide how the kitchen is my place. <laughs> you don't come into my kitchen, you know, leave the kitchen alone. That kind of thing happens, you know. So that sense of control is really sun moon is a very strong link there. That can be very good, in fact. You know, there's a natural complement that can happen. In other combination, obviously, is the Mars Venus interaction. So you are, the man's Mars is on top of woman's Venus, or even women women's top of man's Venus also. I've seen both. So man's Mars on top of women's Venus is actually that, you know, I think Babji Ji, you're saying that that fire of Mars is literally going towards that Venus of, you know, that relationship. So that can be a very strong bond. And uh, especially if that man's Mars on top of women's Venus, very strong attraction towards that. It's a very natural thing. You can't avoid it. You, you, don't, you don't know why you're that a natural appreciation of beauty is very there. You know, even the little things which that other person says or the dressing, dressing man person or put, their, put the makeup can actually make you very attracted to that person. You know, now when uh, when your Venus is interacting with the other person's mind, suddenly that recept- you are more you are more open to being receptive. You know, you, uh, you don't you don't feel like making that move first. So the, so say say woman's Mars is or the man's Venus, then it's like the man is taking less effort relationship and the woman is chasing that man very strongly because that Mars of the woman is being active. Suddenly the woman is protective about that man. Suddenly woman, are you talking to? <laughs> all that kind of thing in the texting, all that guarding kind of possessive kind of nature of Mars can come, you know. That kind of thing can be very strong. But usually this is great for sexual attraction. This is very straightforward. That is great for sexual attraction, you can say that. Right? With Mars, Venus interaction. And usually they look at that also. But usually, ideally for marriage, also look for Jupiter and moon interaction. Because uh, Jupiter, one Jupiter is on other person's moon. That can mean that one person is actually in, enhancing the an intelligence of the other person's mind. So that is very great. In fact, uh, that is also a very natural kind of um, uh, link you find in many relationships. This can be this can be great in terms of even the woman Jupiter falling on top of man's moon. That is very great because then woman is giving advice and that man is feeling much more empowered because that woman said something again. I've seen. Now, say a man Jupiter is falling on top of a woman's moon, then I've seen that uh, they are very, is very open to the advice uh, that which that man is giving. And the man is very, giving very good encouragement, always inspiring, inspiring the, all that kind of thing happens. So it's very, very strong. And uh, usually this can also mean that there is a strong spiritual kind of thing that can happen. That's also a big thing. Sometimes these are the relationships or marriages in which the man tends to give a lot of advice. Man is almost functioning like a guru, you know. And sometimes, of course, in some relationships that can be uh, that can work well, but in some cases that might not also work well, depending upon the you know. So I've seen that. So it's like you might have to be very uh, be very observant about what is actually happening on that. Point. Are you? Okay, this depends upon many other factors, you know. So one, so the Jupiter Moon interaction is great. Mars Venus interaction is great. You know, even uh, you know, even the sun, moon, and uh, moon, sun. Those mutual interactions is great. Now, same thing like how uh, Babji Ji was the the Asura interaction is perfect. You know, so Saturn, one person Saturn interacting with other Mercury or Venus, that is also great. That that my now here in this case, there's a great friendship that can happen in this case. You know, Saturn interacting with Mercury. Venus interacting with other persons, Venus or Venus Mercury interaction happening. These three planetary interactions happening is very very good. Same thing with the Deva planets also, Mars, Jupiter, uh, and Sun and Moon. Any kind of those interactions are very good uh, complements, very good teammates. 
you know the team work is very good work along that side uh, everything is very very good in fact now um, in some cases i have seen no matter what the planet is if if one person's seventh lord is on top of if your son is uh, is um, say whatever that planet is right so say venus is your seventh lord and if that person's venus is if that if your seventh lord is the planetary interaction from the other person shot upon your ascendant that will sometimes bring marriage no the, this is something i have seen observation thing so it's also that um, um, this can be any planet but that planet is the seventh lord in your chart and that other person seventh lord planet is on top of your other person's planet is on top of your ascendant so say your aries lagna venus is your seventh lord and the other person's venus is on top of your ascendant that can bring marriage say your leo lagna saturn is your seventh lord you other person saturn is on top of leo that can also some marriage of course for leo lagna you know leo and cancer lagna marriages <laughs> work you know it's not easy for them by you know just because and meeting of sun and saturn and moon and saturn but um, this is this is an interaction i've seen and of course that interaction with karma is associated with that particular planet so the seventh lord on top of your ascendant is some if um, especially from the other chart i've seen that can sometimes bring very karmic kind of relationship karmic kind of marriage very easily i have seen that the other uh, variation i have seen is if your seventh lord and in your seventh house the other persons are actually your seventh lord in your chart and that is falling in your seventh house also so say again for leo ascendant saturn is the seventh lord is in the seventh house if if that persons uh, saturn is in aquarius in your chart and that can also bring marriage you know so your seventh house is occupied from the other chart by the corresponding seventh lord that can also easily bring marriage so again uh, easy another easy example is saturn taurus ascendant uh, so scorpio is your seventh house and mars seventh lord and if the other person chart is having mars in scorpio then that can also sometimes bring marriage that can bring relationships also you know very really can happen so that seventh house occupied by the other person chart with the corresponding lord that can also indicate marriage very easily now one thing i've seen in general with the problematic marriages or relationships that are not working out the biggest thing i've seen is interacting with your son in the chart or some kind of ketu interaction with the seventh lord mutual mutual charts so say your seventh lord now uh, taurus ascendant mars is your seventh lord and the other person who is falling on top of your mars then one way or the other it is just being denied what can happen is that you are uh, you are definitely there will be an initial attraction you can't explain why that attraction is happening why you feel drawn to that person but then uh, you look at the charts you can easify that ketu interaction mars show, is showing that you were either a past life partner to the other person you were you were very good friends with your with the other person perhaps you were you might have even been sexual partners in your past the easy thing ketu with mars that can also be the case and that's why the natural attraction is there but then in some cases ketu with mars sometimes i've seen that can these are the proposals you you try to fix a marriage and one way or the other that's just not working out it's something i've seen so this ketu interaction is very important to see now this is in that when ketu is um, now say this can be modified if planets are supporting this interaction now say is ketu is on top of your mars but you say you have jupiter's aspect upon this ketu and mars interaction or okay, ketu so lord interaction then that can significantly modify the things say there are other benefits that are aspecting then that can also support this thing sure you had past life bonding there are some circumstances which is separating between you and the other person but then other person other planetary support positions are according that so there are of course you have whole chart you know but if you be mindful of this particular interaction then you can be, become aware of what is actually happening you know now uh, one easy way i see you know, now this is um, one 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 more simple thing i can say is a look at your mahadasha planet look at what that planet is doing in the other person's chart and then you will see that also working you know so and corresponding look at what mahadasha planet planet for the other person 
look at look at what that planet is in your chart you will see that is also a very important kind of role also so the so usually they do synastry between the uh, static ch- chart planets but the moment when you include the mahadasha planet suddenly you will find initially you know mars venus thing is happening so sexual attraction there marriage is very peaceful all that suddenly after mars one person begins you know rahu dasha and suddenly you know that then complete out of nowhere all kind of also of the lineage is coming down you know, all from the dna and all that is coming heavy karma is coming on suddenly the quality of marriage so now you see that there is an actual thing so you also have to look at the synastry of mahadasha planets also it is one big thing and then as babji ji was saying you know like uh, in some cases difficult marriages because one person mahadasha was that of shani and suddenly the saturn mahadasha ended and mercury mahadasha began and now suddenly the whole marriage improved in big way <laughs> because uh, in a 180 degree shift you know. the synastry of mahadasha planet is also very very important to see now also uh, this can also mean that you can use these ideas intelligently you know so okay you understand the other person is going through rahu so you give space for the other person to become rahu right you know you understand how rahu is influencing in your chart and then you know you can be much more intelligent about that so that person will be more open to bringing foreign influences uh, with regard to that particular sign and house in your chart and you just have to be open to that you know uh, but yeah this uh, synastry uh, interesting topic uh, for me babji ji you know i have to say that i've seen this working in many cases so i've seen that uh, especially you now see is now this is the other variation also say this mahadasha planet is uh, one person mahadasha planet is falling in your 7th house in your chart so when that mahadasha is active your relationship is going well and fine and when the mahadasha changes for the other person then there is an actual problem with the relationship that can also happen. so that is a very interesting thing to consider you know uh, to be become aware of the mahadasha also in as of course you can extend this concept to under the shas and within the shas and you can kind of identify much more in this also of course that but the, but the simplest thing i have seen is that if you sim- superimpose the chart you look at these particular interaction look at what you know easiest thing to identify is that which person is irritating you 100% you will see mars saturn rahu ketu influencing either your sun your moon in that these three will be me you will feel i don't know why i feel angry around that person your mars person mars is on top of your moon easily you can say that. and then uh, you know uh, in some cases this can be very karmic you know so one person rahu on top of your mars that person actually has the karma to make you become angry make make you fight actually so you will see that uh, and sometimes that's not great because you might have the natural aggression being amplified especially in relationship you know in relationship if you channel channelize that much more harmonious activity so rahu is like uh, rahu is occult signs also also the planet that is about um, workout and gym and all that can also be a yoga planet itself the planet that is responsible for you to do yoga itself do yoga then that's great then the problem is satisfied you know there is no problem the anger is channeled into your yoga yogic exercises and then it's much more calmer now so but the other person will be triggering you to go to <laughs> yoga and do all the sadhana and all that kind of thing so that rahu is influencing your mars you know? that can also happen in that way because with ketu interaction say ketu of mars you might feel like you're trying to do something but then that is not happening because this uh, you try to do something the mars the person planned is trying to do something which is mars ketu is coming and just scattering that mars away if you personally just say something or do something subconsciously you will feel like that mars energy is in influence you know so of course the uh, malefic interaction the rahu and what your rahu on top of the other person saturn mars is 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 uh, sometimes can be challenging especially these malefic astro because uh, rahu and rahu saturn i have seen there's some some strong karma karmic link is there strong karmic link between rahu and mars now rahu synastry itself is a complete you know one hour video by itself because what i've seen with rahu is that it's as if all the rest of the eight planets are there to shape that rahu's energy one way or the other and this uh, it's almost like so you will have this rahu's raw energy right and rahu is capable of handling uh, taking any planetary energies depending upon the sign it is so say sun is interacting with rahu feel that 
you know this sun person is giving this person lot more confidence and lot more recognition and things like that moon interacting with rahu this person is giving lot more emotional support and making you listen to your emotions more and things like that you know mars interaction is actually making you more angry or that kind of thing is happening and then venus is make definitely that relationship thing will be very strong so that diplomatic thing is becoming very important in general mercury will definitely you'll be talking with each other for sure with mercury and rahu and now sun with rahu becomes difficult as i mentioned because one person is trying to become very pessimistic and that can sometimes be very really disciplined also very cold and that person but that is also function which rahu is trying to absorb and learn also so rahu person might be scattered all days and saturn person is asking you to channelize also you know but uh, again uh, you have to look at how harsh it is you know if one person is mature so saturn person is mature he understands it what saturn is what works and what doesn't work so <coughs> he's sharing his or her experience that can be great also and uh, and that is fine on that if you handle it intelligently that is fine and usually this means that there is some influence happening or something like that that is what i've seen you know with some jupiter influence or some other benefic influences happening so perhaps saturn reaction might be harsh because of saturn and rahu but then there might be some other good influence happening on the other side so jupiter is with moon jupiter is with sun so sure the one person same person who's feeling the coldness of saturn might feel nourished by the other particular planetary combination you know so that synastry you considering all the planetary synastries at that point and then you get the full picture you slowly develop the full picture of what is actually happening on that point you know that is one thing i've seen um but yeah one uh, interesting thing i can say is that if you begin to this um, synastry with your family you can immediately understand what issues are coming up and where that issues are coming up with certain family members immediately and you can even understand your past life pending karma also easily so some persons planets are falling in your 6th house 8th house 12th house you actually have some pending karma and uh, biggest thing i've seen is that if you have sun moon and even ascendant falling in one of your houses you can immediately understand okay this person his life path will eventually create problem for you or some kind of karma will be activated for you but if you handle it intelligently so you are like okay this person's planets are majority of your planets are falling in your 12th house okay then you can understand fine this person's karma as we grow older this person might actually it uh, create low but then you can actually be intelligent about it and literally like you know give uh, give dan intelligently you know you can give that donation intelligently to that person you can do it intelligently okay you understand that this person has some karmic thing in which he is running a planet which is in your 12th house he is running a planet his ascendant is also there in your 12th house and you know for sure this person one way or other will create some kind of a 12th house kind of experience in your life karmically is destined to do that so then you can actually use it of spirit so you can use it with spend time with him in isolation you can understand spiritual practices in many way and usually we have to remember the rishis uh, you know used to invite these kind of <laughs> people into their lives very strongly yeah like and god i can finally get rid of my own karma <laughs> and usually they would welcome the disasters into their life they would welcome like oh my ashram got destroyed by the flood so okay thank god my karma is moved <laughs> you know? so they would actually approach it like that so of course you have to again as babuji ji mentioned on we shouldn't be it from a perspective of fear but it should be approached from a perspective of uh, you know that's the important thing so like you're understanding the influences and stuff like that so but yeah 12th house 6th house and 8th house the interaction i was seeing straightforward this is very simple nasty concept you'll see some kind of transformation is triggered in a very specific manner corresponding to that planet which is falling so say mercury is in one person mercury is in your eighth house he will he or she will say something and then you are like oh god what's this i have to change my way or something. you know but because mercury is and then you will be like great you know that's one thing uh, so say it's not that bad but say some other planets uh, harsh planet is falling in your eighth house and for sure you'll feel you know is a very challenging experience also. but again if you understand okay this is an eighth house kind of karma if you understand the planet then you can do the corresponding remedies also very easily so say mars remedy you just have to do something with fire you know saturn is like of course work and hanuman and all that kind of thing you know um, and then rahu and ketu is definitely you have to worship heavier deities uh, or you know or even ganpati or something like that 
you know, Bhairav, Bhairali, all that. So if you do that, that will help you out actually. And you see that um, it's actually in a karmic sense, the people who you to or who are coming in your life is 100% connected with your own personal karma. So if you understand the specific interaction, you can be very, very intelligent about how you're dealing with them. And many times uh, you'll find, usually, um, I think in one former video, they were saying, if one fine nine relationship was between the ascendant, that is great. This is a karmic past life link that is playing. Then the one for seven ten interaction, that was actually, that means that there is a free will kind of element is very strong. With say 12 interaction, that might be slightly challenging with the ascendance at least. Now with the other, the, the rest of the houses that is uh, remaining, so it's like three and whatever that is left, right? Three and 11. So there might be more gains in friendship that can happen at that point. So that is one good. So you, uh, you, you can form very good for that kind of thing. Now, now one other, uh, so we have Rashi charts in ST so far. Now I, I'm giving a lot, a lot of information so far. But you know, um, the, the last point I'll say on this synastry is that you can look at the synastry of uh, the Navamsha chart and the Rashi chart of the uh, person. So usually we only look at uh, um, Rashi chart synastry. And of course that definitely will play out. But you can also do the synastry of your Rashi chart and the chart of the other person. In some cases, uh, especially in uh, marriages and stuff, the wife's Samsha chart will reflect the Rashi chart of the husband. So wife is having very good uh, Jupiter, husband is in that same Jupiter placement. And then because of that Jupiter placement, the entire marriage is saved. You know, that same, same thing, it is actually helping out the everything else also. So the Navamsha chart placement is also very, Sinastri is also very helpful uh, to look at. You know, same, same interaction, you can see that also in, you know, uh, that. But yeah, yeah, Babaji, I talked, Babaji, ji, I talked a lot. Uh, any, any questions, comments you would like to add on this? Yeah, one, one more thing I have seen that, like whenever people come to me with this, you know, or synastry or anything like that, then what I do is, uh, now we, we talked very nicely, you know, what is there and what will happen. But one right. thing, what I think we should start doing as astrologers is, uh, you know, trying to figure out how we can help the person. So, for example, right. uh, what I do is, now when we see all this, we understand where is the problem, right? <laughs> right. right. And right. Then what I try to do is, for example, of course, this can only be done, uh, disclaimer, if, if, if the situation between the couple is like you know oh you know we are we are kind of we, we can at least stay but the marriage is not very great but if it is like you know you can't tolerate each other and you know you are you can't even right. stand each other then this doesn't help much so right. suppose your married life is going good but it's not very great or as you expected then this right. can be done so for example what i do is i I try to find uh, at least two very good planets in their chart. Mm -hmm. like on the yep. man's That's chart good, yeah. and on the wife's yep. So then yep. I try to see, so for example, suppose somebody is, uh, Mercury is very well placed. Right. So then I try to see uh, what is this, how is her Mercury placed? <laughs> yeah. Because yep. uh, how is her Mercury place? And I don't see for the malefics because malefics will not give you anything. They will only take from you. The giving part is from the benefits. So I just consider yep. the natural benefits in this case. So I see uh, and luckily if somebody is lucky enough that two of their natural malefics are well placed, then they are really very lucky, I would say. You know? Mercury, Venus, Sun, Jupiter. Yep. Moon also. Yeah. Then I see, suppose among the four, you know, uh, somebody has uh, Jupiter is very well placed in somebody's chart. You know, then I try yeah. to see how this, how the wife's Jupiter can help this man's Jupiter. I try to see. Yes. Then I try yes. to see, suppose somebody's Jupiter is in Aries, the man's Jupiter is in Aries, or maybe it is in trines, fifth or ninth. You know, then that's a great placement for yes. Jupiter, for that person. Now, yes. uh, suppose that the lady's uh, Jupiter is placed, you know, in uh, maybe Virgo, for example. Mm -hmm. 
so now yeah. that is like a uh, you know six six set relation which is happening you know yes then that affects the person the man very badly because yes. it is like imagine you know um, you have so many things in your home but you have that one precious stuff you know who you are very proud right. of, and you know you are very happy right and then imagine right. your wife comes and hey, what is this this is nothing throw this out right. Right. How will you feel? You know? So imagine right. a man has a great Jupiter and he's very spiritual, and you know he is, you know, or his ninth lord is greatly placed. Ah. Right. Okay. Or imagine he has some great yoga like Dharma Karma Dipati Yoga is there, which is all related to Jupiter. You know? And then the wife right. comes and says, you know, what nonsense are you doing? You know, you are doing meditation. I want to go for you know this holiday to Paris. You know, when are you going to take me? So. I have seen, you know, if if you have a planet which is badly placed, and then the the partner's planet is badly placed from that planet, it doesn't affect much. I have seen because you already know right. I I am screwed up in that area. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Yeah. But if you have a yeah. great planet, you know, and then yeah. that that corresponding partner's chart, that planet is not well placed from from your sign. Then that creates a lot of problems. Right. And in that case, I suggest the lady that uh, whenever he is doing his spiritual practices or meditation or whatever, you know, let him do at peace. Because by that, what will happen? That area of happiness will be maintained in his life. Yes. Yeah. And similarly, yeah. it can be like that. You know, for example, if a lady has, you know, uh, maybe a great Venus, very well placed Venus. So Venus, if it right. is, I have seen. Um, uh, the the they are very good with you know painting especially yeah painting or dressing especially sometimes I see it's more with painting also I've seen surprisingly and can be cars or dressing home also or dressing themselves if it's linked with the lagu so then right. you know, it's like that that is one area which the lady cherishes very much you know I know how to paint or I love to dress you know and then. Now, if suppose this lady, you know, spends, you know, half an hour, one hour, two hours dressing. And then this right. person, he's, you know, that uh, <laughs> maybe imagine her Venus is in uh, Libra and this person's, you know, Venus is in maybe some Pisces or something. So it's not a great relation, you know, it's again a six eight relation right. or Virgo. That's like right. the worst. You know? right. Then now she dresses and you know you don't appreciate her that she's looking good or she's looking nice. Then that yeah. that will make her feel as if her life is worthless. You know yeah. because uh, and other way also I have seen you know like one lady I know her Jupiter is very strong and she does you know a lot of mantras and all this. And the husband Jupiter is very badly spoiled and then he keeps ridiculing her. Why are you wasting time? Now let's go and watch movies. You know let's have fun. Right. So it can be the other way around always, you know, and it can happen that a man yeah. may keep himself fit physically or, uh, you know, attractive, yeah. but because of Venus, yeah. but if the wife's Venus is not well placed, then she will not appreciate him. You know, she will say, oh, anyways, you know, yeah. what is this? You know, you, yeah. are, you, are, you are looking just like anybody else. So now nobody may do this yeah. directly, but at a subtle level, this happens. Yes. You know, because yes. directly nobody will say like this, you know, but subtle level, you know, so for example, suppose... A person uh, has a great Jupiter and he or she wants to go to a spiritual yatra. And then the yes. spouse may not directly say, you know, what about our holiday, you know, to Paris or to Leading Tower of Pisa or even to the Taj Mahal, of course. You know? so right. they, they had built these great monuments. If we don't see them, what will happen? You know, the, the monuments will be ruined if you don't see. So then uh, right. they may they may do it very subtly, you know. Oh, but what about our program? You know, we were supposed to go this year. What will happen? You know. Yeah. So then yeah. Uh, the other party may feel, you know, I mean, that or if suppose somebody Saturn is very well placed, you know, you know right. Saturn is very well placed, and she is like very disciplined, gets up every day morning on time, and this man, you know, his Saturn is, you know, screwed. And right. maybe like, you know, what the hell is this? You know, you don't go for jogging. You don't get up in the morning. You, you, you have no discipline. So she will not have respect for the man like that. You know? Right. Or if somebody is uh, Jupiter, not Jupiter, I've seen Jupiter and Moon are, you know, conjunct or respecting each other in trines. You know, then these people are generally very positive. I have seen. And then you right. see the other partner has, you know, Moon, Saturn, conjunct. So right. then this other person will always keep finding faults. 
Yep, exactly that. Yes, yeah. and this Jupiter Moon person will always be finding good. So it is like you know, <laughs> no one yeah, is yeah. More, more optimistic and one is more practical or pessimistic. I would say. So then we yeah. have to kind of uh, try to see um, what should the person do. You know, so for example, as I said, uh, if, if if the man has a great Jupiter and the wife's Jupiter is not uh, good in synastry, then we can say the to the wife that. This is a very important zone for him, so don't interfere in this. Let him do what he wants, okay? And same yes, is for yes. you know Venus or Moon, whatever it is. And some so if yes, something yes, is yes. Good, do more of it. If something is bad, stay away. Yes. At least don't yes. ruin. Yes. It's already ruined. Don't damage yes. it more, okay? Because yes. Yes. ultimately, I have seen you know. And uh, the last thing I would say, I mean, we could talk more, but you know, I have to leave to some place. So the last thing I would say here is. Uh, uh, this is irrespective of synastry, I'm saying. 